The purpose of computation is insight, not numbers. Bellman's words remind us that behind every complex problem lies an opportunity for a deeper understanding. In the vast labyrinths of decisions and paths, like our maze, wandering aimlessly can be exhausting. But what if there was a beacon, a guiding light? This beacon is the essence of reinforcement learning, a compass born from experience and insight. Let's embark on this journey to discover how it lights the way. In order to understand how we're going to solve this, we need a brief review on what the markup process is. Hey, have you heard of the Markov process? Yeah, I have. It's a mathematical model describing the events based on previous dates, right? Exactly. In a Markov process, each event's likelihood only depends on the last state. So, events don't remember what came before? Right, it is a memoryless process. The future only cares about now and not the past sequence. Got it. The present shapes the future regardless of history. Precisely. It's used in physics, economics, and even computer science to understand and predict sequences. It's like a coin toss, isn't it? At every event, it can hop from the head state to tails or stay at heads. Two possibilities. Exactly. Just like the coin doesn't care if it was heads or tails before, it's all about the current state influencing the next move. That's a simple yet powerful way to capture randomness in various scenarios. Absolutely, it's a fundamental concept that finds its way into so many different fields. As we continue to solve our maze, it will become evident that each step the mouse can take is random, illustrating our very own version of a Markovian process. This mathematical gym equips us to tackle intricate decisions with clarity. We can think of our maze problem as a version of a Markovian process called a finite Markov process. Here, we have an agent, a mouse in our case, that takes actions that which is passed to an environment. This environment then produces a reward in the next state. These are then passed back to the agent and the process repeats. In the episodic case, it continues until a terminal state like the cheese is reached, marking the end of an episode. The possible state, action, and reward values are restricted to the problem-specific finite sets. The dynamics of the environment are given with a probability function which stipulates the likelihood of the next state and reward based on the current state and action. Our main goal here is to determine a policy which is a state-dependent distribution over actions. Our agent then chooses action by sampling from the distribution. If we run an agent's policy through this Markov decision process, we will get a trajectory which is a series of states, actions, and rewards. Ultimately, our aim is to secure a high discounted sum of future rewards, averaged over numerous trajectories. One particular sum is represented as GT, signifying our overarching goal. Now, to make progress, we can consider the state value functions and action value functions. These offer the expected value of GT, assuming that our agent is following the policy pi and is at a given state or state action pair. We can find the optimal policy if we can pinpoint the max of these functions. Let's dive deeper into our maze. It isn't just walls and paths, it's a game built on strategic rules designed to guide our mouse to the most optimal path. But every move comes with a cost. For each step our mouse takes, there's a deduction of negative 0.04 points. Think of it as a gentle push, encouraging our mouse to seek the quickest route to the cheese, where a delightful reward of 1 point awaits. But here's the catch. Wrong decisions come at a price. Those red cells are off limits. Wrenching towards one will deduct a hefty negative 0.75 points. Attempting to wander outside the maze, that's a penalty of negative 0.8 points. And we've designed the maze to reward exploration, meaning revisiting a previously explored cell results in a negative 0.25 point penalty. By framing these rules, we're not just setting challenges, we're incentivizing smart moves, ensuring our model always finds the shortest path to the cheese. As we train our mouse over the course of many trials, we, as architects of this model, grapple with a crucial balance. Exploration versus exploitation. Let's unpack this. At the very start, we got our mouse with a completely random policy. Imagine it's like tossing a dice to decide the mouse's next move in the maze. Over thousands of games, the mouse learns from this randomness, refining its approach with each step. However, as training progresses, we need the mouse to rely not only on the randomness, but on its past experiences. This is where the exploration versus exploitation dance begins. 
Exploitation has our mouse take steps based on its previous journeys. These steps are derived from the policy we've nurtured. Think of, think of it as the mouse tapping into its memory of past moves to find the cheese more efficiently. Roughly 90% of the time, we lean on this strategy. But then there's exploration, our mouse's wild card. In about 10% of its moves, we let the mouse choose a completely random direction. It's akin to you occasionally trying a new restaurant instead of always going to your favorites. This randomness ensures that our mouse doesn't get stuck in a rut and remains open to discovering potentially better paths. The balance between these two is determined by our exploration factor, epsilon, typically set at 0.1. This means that one in every 10 moves, our mouse might take a walk on the wild side, exploring unchartered territories. This delicate balance ensures our mouse becomes proficient, yet remains curious, always inching towards the optimal path to the cheese. Now that we know the rules of the game and the fundamentals of Markov chains, let's delve deeper into creating a Markov decision process for our maze environment. Imagine our mouse in a maze. When it takes action A at time t, it transitions from its current state S to a new state S prime at time t plus 1. And for this action, it gets a reward. Here's the equation that captures this transition and reward. T is our transition function guiding our mouse from one state to the next. R represents the reward. Consider this Markov chain of our mouse navigating through five states in this maze. Each move has a slight penalty to encourage efficiency. The mouse's objective to secure the cheese with a maximum reward of 1, while minimizing wandering. So how does our mouse decide its next move? Through a policy function pi, which tells our mouse the best action to take at any given state, maximizing its total reward. With this policy in hand, navigating the maze becomes akin to an autopilot journey. Just follow the policy's guidance at each state, ensuring the path to the cheese is both rewarding and efficient. But here's a million dollar question. How do we determine the optimal policy pi? That's where the depth and elegance of Markov decision process truly shines. Google's DeepMind, among other pioneers, faced challenges in the realm of Q-learning. Their clever strategy for identifying pi was based around a particular function, Q of SA. This best utility function is now often referred to as Q-learning, with a Q representing quality. Consider Q of SA as the compass pointing to the most rewarding direction when selecting action A in state S. The underlying challenge is decoding this compass both efficiently and effectively. Armed with Q of SA, decision making is more intuitive. By assessing all possible outcomes via Q of SA, we can confidently choose the action that is most promising. But a critical question emerges. How do we truly understand and extract this essential Q of SA function? Introducing the Bellman equations a guiding principle on our journey. In essence, this formula reveals that Q of SA combines the immediate reward with the most promising reward of the next action. Aligning with Bellman's formula, we secure our place with the best utility function propelling us towards maximum rewards. Now, let's discover the Bellman equations together. We'll start with the one for the value function. Now, before I show you this, I should warn you, this part is mostly algebra. Let's motivate this with an example. Let's say we have these states, which we can label like this. Instead of describing the whole Markov decision process, I'm going to focus on this state, S0. From this state, the agent can pick left or right. If the agent selects right, the reward and next state probabilities are given by this distribution. For example, if the agent selects right, this tells us that, that there is a 9% chance that the agent will end up at S2 with a reward of 0. As you'd expect, something similar is true for selecting left. Next, the policy from this state is a 40% chance of choosing left and a 60% chance of choosing right. And the discount factor is 0.95. Now here's the question. If I also tell you the state values of the possible next states, can you determine the val value at state S0? Yes, it's determined by the Bellman equation. To discover it ourselves, we can start with the definition of what we're trying to calculate. Remember, is the expected return conditional on the current state at zero? Regarding notation, I'll be using this shorthand to omit the random variable when it's obvious. Okay, back to it. We break this down by action, meaning it'll be a sum of two terms, one for the left action and one for the right action. Each term will be the expected return conditional on the current state and action weighted by the probability of taking each action. If you know your probability theory, you'll notice that this is just an application of the law of total probability. Also, if you're observant, you'll recognize that this term is in fact an action value. Okay, from here, let's pick up the go right expectation and recognize something about GT. It obeys a simple recursive relationship. 
GT is equal to the reward plus the once discounted return one step later. With a little algebra, that's not too hard to see. And so, we can write it like this. What I've done here is I've replaced GT plus 1 with what you get when plugging in the randomly determined next state into the value function. This is sneaky because they're not equal. However, in expectation, they are. This isn't too hard to see if you recall the definition of the state value function and apply the law of total probability. But more importantly, because it's true, this substitution works. Now, from here it gets easier. We just remember that these are random variables and we're calculating an expectation. By definition, it's just a probability weighted average of values, and we can find that information in the go right distribution. Specifically, this will equal a sum over all pairs of rewards and states. Each term will be weighted by their probability. The terms themselves are just this expression with the value substituted in, which is this. And remember, at the start, we were given the values, and so we have everything we need to calculate the right action ex expectation. And we can do this the exact same thing for the left action. That would give us all the numbers for this, which means we have everything we need to calculate our answer. And this is what our Bellman equation does for us. It connects state values. In fact, it connects all state values. This means we, if we can solve for some state values, we can solve for others. It began with a simple quest, a mouse's pursuit of cheese. But what if the cheese represents something far grander? Enter DeepMind, a beacon in the world of artificial intelligence. With multiple patents under their belt, they're reshaping the very fabric of AI research and applications. One such marvel is AlphaZero, not just a student but a master of games like chess, transcending human expertise without any prior knowledge. But games are just the tip of the iceberg. Imagine reinforcement learning, optimizing trades in the complex world of stock markets. And beyond our financial world, the principles of reinforcement learning promise potential revolutions, even in areas as complex as nuclear fusion of plasma. So while our mouse's journey began in a maze, the real journey of reinforcement learning is about navigating the vast maze of real world challenges. From a simple quest of choosing a cheese to reshaping our future, the horizons of reinforcement learning are ever expanding. Thanks for watching.